Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. It is the fourth Sunday of Easter. And traditionally, uh, every year for the fourth Sunday of Easter, we designate it as Good Shepherd Sunday. Because today we hear from John chapter 10 about Jesus as our Good Shepherd and what that means. Please rise for our opening hymn, number 710. <laughs> Peace 
epistle reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2. For this is a gracious thing, when mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, and you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated for him.
gospel reading just read, in particular, uh, this verse. Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, as I mentioned at the beginning of our service. And each fourth Sunday of Easter, we remember that Jesus is our good shepherd. And we recall from the Gospel of St. John various aspects of what a shepherd does for his sheep and what Jesus does for us. Now, it is called Good Shepherd Sunday, but we could also call it the Door Sunday. Because you heard Jesus today, and the verse I spoke to you twice, say, I am the Door. This is a helpful comparison for us, that Jesus is the penultimate door, the way to eternal life for us. It's a good example, because doors, they play a regular part in our lives both in history and in our culture. There was that old game show. And yes, I looked up a couple of episodes of this because I remember they had doors involved and you had to open a door and whatever was behind that door, you won the prize. Could have been a new car. Or one of the doors I saw open up. It was a live goat. <laughs> what a present. What a, what a uh, victory. Doors have a mystery about them. We have sayings in our life. We say, opportunity knocks on doors. We have famous doors or famous gates where uh, important things in history took place. We have the hot gates of Thermopylae. If you remember your classics, the Battle of the 300. We have the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. And of course, since we're Lutheran, who can forget the doors on All Saints Church in Wittenberg where Luther nailed the 95 pieces? Doors have a bit of mystery. They hide something. You don't know what's coming. It could be good. It could be bad. It's a point of uncertainty. Once you open it, well, many times you can't close it. History changes. Today, Jesus says he's the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Jesus leaves no uncertainty. There is no surprise. Enter through Jesus and you will find what you need. Not only do you just find life, but Jesus says you will find Abundant life. The problem is, is that as sheep, that's not always what we want. Opportunity knocks, and we gladly answer a door that doesn't bring life, but sin. Think about your life and the many doors that you've stood in front of. Job changes, major purchases, a major changing a, a major changing your major in school, or even just picking a school. That fateful moment that you made a decision that impacted the rest of your life. Often, sometimes these doors are doors we wish we could now close. Because you see, the devil also likes doors. Because he can hide behind them. God even warned Cain. He said, sin is crouching at the door. And when we open these doors, they're painful. Whether to us or to the people around us, our actions have consequences. I know I wish I could go back in my life and put a Close for business sign on some doors. There's some doors that I've opened that I wish I hadn't opened. 
I wish it said close, go back home. Closed because of the pandemic of sin. Lock away the key, throw it out, do not touch, move on. But alas, we don't always listen to our good shepherd. But too often we listen to our selfish desires, our wants. We listen to our flesh and we sin. And we open the door, not just to little mistakes, but we open the door to death. It is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and this is where we hear about our good shepherd. Jesus tells us himself that he is a shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd, and he says, I am the door. And we're not going to celebrate the iconic rock band, The Doors. But today we reflect on the door, Jesus. Now, we might be more comfortable considering Jesus as the good shepherd. But he also says that he is the door and that the sheep need to come in and they need to go out into pasture. That his sheep need to be taken care of. That we are not self-feeders. We need a shepherd. We need a shepherd who doesn't stay away but feeds, pastures us, and leads us. So what if this aspect of shepherds is a door? Well, at night, various shepherds would gather at a, a pen, a place to hold the sheep during the night to protect them from the lion that prowls around looking for whom he might devour. They would all gather their sheep in the pen, and the shepherd would sleep at the one entrance of the pen. He himself would sleep there and guard the sheep with his very body and blood. And he would be the door. Then in the morning, the various shepherds would arise from sleep and they would call out their sheep. And each herd of sheep would recognize their shepherd's voice. And the shepherd would lead them to find good food to nourish them, water. They would follow their shepherd. A stranger they did not follow, a strange door they would not go out. And that is what sin is. It's a strange door. It's following a strange voice. A door that's out of place. A door that has all the warning signs from our shepherd. Do not enter. But what do we do? We walk right through it. We face temptation. We don't use the gifts that our shepherd has given to us in time of temptation. Prayer in his word. But instead we listen to the voice of the false shepherd. We listen to the worst false shepherd. Our sinful flesh. Our shepherd has told us not to lie. Not to cheat. He's told us to mind ourselves. But we can't help to open that door of gossip. This is especially dangerous for the church. James says that the tongue can set a forest ablaze. That the tongue is like the rudder of a ship, small, but when it's used to steer, can guide a whole ship into wreckage. A door that when you open, you cannot take your words back. Jesus is the door to feed us, to give us life. But we like other doors, don't we? We are happy to let thieves and robbers in. Thieves that steal our time from our family. And instead of studying God's word, instead of being led into the pasture by our good shepherd, even we Christians, we allow ourselves to be shepherded by those who do not love Jesus. Electronic gadgets to spend more time behind locked doors, the internet, television, false shepherds that are ready to steal you. Jesus says the sheep do not listen to them, most especially your own sinful flesh. But I know that I have. I know that I myself have not heeded my shepherd's words. 
And I know I'm not alone. We hear the 23rd Psalm today, and we hear almost what could be a confession for us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The truth is, I want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, but I would rather lie down in pastures of green money. He leads me beside still waters, but I wander to find the angry rapids of sin. We jump right in when we lose our patience and get angry. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear. I will fear getting sick. I will fear poverty. I will fear the devil. I will fear that people won't like me. I'll fear that I'm going to lose my job. I will fear anything more than God. The good shepherd knows this. This is why today's picture of Jesus as a shepherd is such a beautiful passage. The good shepherd knows this, and so what does he do? He goes to find his lost sheep. Your good shepherd calls you back to his pen. After wandering in the night to the shadow of death, he says, Come back to me, little lamb. Yes, your wool is dirty. You have neglected my voice. Enter my pen through me, and I will make your wool white as snow. For although you look bruised, although you've gone through doors and have opened doors that cannot be closed, I have already forgiven you. And indeed, I will use all things for your good. What a shepherd. Although you have opened doors that cannot be closed, feed on me. Even though you perhaps haven't been able to physically wander so much these last few weeks, the thoughts of our hearts and minds have wandered to all those same places we went to even when life was normal. And Christ says, come back. He says, I have found you, my lost lamb. And there is no door that your shepherd will not go through to rescue you. He even went through the door of death, the door of suffering, not for his sins, but for yours. There is no door that he would not go through to rescue you, his lamb. He says, hear my voice. I myself bore your sins in my body on the tree so that your sins would not stick to you. So when it seems, even at death, that that door is the end, Jesus says, no. I am the door. I have brought you through death into life already in me. I have washed you through the door of death and opened eternal life to you by my blood shed on the tree. The water door of baptism, there was a passageway, your red sea, where your sins and all your enemies are washed away. There you were brought through me. I carried you. Your sins were left standing at the door. They will not follow me. I am the door, Jesus said. I let none of your sins through, for I have died with them, and I have shut the door of the grave on them. The stone door rolled away, and Jesus came forward, and your sins stayed dead. Everything has changed. Now our good shepherd comes to us. Not even death can stop him, and death cannot stop you. Your sins have been crushed. The door of eternal life, open. Only don't go back opening those doors of death. Don't return to those strange doors. Don't reject Jesus' call of repentance. So how does our shepherd lead us 
He leads us by His Word. He leads us to faith and the forgiveness of sins. He tells us that His sheep need to come in and go out. We come in to receive Christ. We go out serving one another in our vocation. He still feeds and pastures us. The reading from Acts, it teaches us. It says, they devoted themselves to the door. The apostles' teachings and the breaking of the bread, word and sacrament. This is our pasture. This is where Christ, the door, is open for us to forgive us our sins. For the word of absolution, your shepherd says, I forgive you. At the word of baptism, your wool was made white. Our shepherd pastures us. We come in, we go out. This is my body, this is my blood. Eat, drink, be pastured. This is your shepherd's voice. Because Jesus is risen from the grave, your sins are locked away. Jesus is your shepherd. Through him, by faith, you have access to God. There's no reason for you to hide behind locked doors. God has forgiven you. Jesus frees us. Imagine as we look forward to the days when we don't have to be behind our locked doors in home. Imagine the freedom that we will have when all this is past, the freedom that maybe we've taken for granted. Do you not know that this is the gospel? That you are free in Christ. That we are free from death, we are free from sin, we are free from worry. But until that day when your Savior finally frees you from your flesh, only to raise you up again with your new flesh. Until then, our shepherd still pastures us. Even when we're behind our locked home doors, his word still comes to you. His Holy Spirit still keeps you in the faith. Because behind this door, there is no uncertainty. Behind this door of Jesus, heaven is open. He keeps bringing us through the door. Our good shepherd, Jesus. Alleluia, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please rise as we confess the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, beyond of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven. And was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. with the prayers of the church and we remember all of those who requested our prayers on page 16. Uh, we remember uh, Barbara Couture who uh, is still scheduled to undergo surgery this week. Uh, Arlen Witt sent me a note and said that we can remove his name from the prayer uh, request. He is 
his, his words, he says he's about 98% healed. Uh, and he says, give thanks to God for that. So indeed, we, we do that and we give thanks that Harlan has fully recovered uh, from his incident on April 12th. Let us pray for the whole church in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Let us pray. Blessed and holy shepherd, you have established your church with your death and mighty resurrection. Grant to us your sheep devotion, that we may abide in the teaching of the apostles and honor the fellowship of the church. Guard us against all the enemies of your word, and keep us within the care of your flock. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty shepherd, you hold in your hands the might of all men. You hold accountable those who would govern your people. Grant to us good government and good leaders who will honor your purpose, protect the innocent, serve the cause of justice, and defend our liberty against all threats. Give them wisdom and moderation in their response to this pandemic. Be with our firefighters, police, our first responders, all personnel in the medical field, those who serve us in the military, and also that we would be obedient citizens. Lord, in your mercy. Good shepherd, you love the world enough to shed your blood. You desire that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Inspire and equip your church and her ministers to speak faithfully and boldly your word. Bless all those who serve your church. Bless us, especially when we are persecuted for the faith or suffer for the sake of the good that honors you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Shepherd, you've clothed us with Christ's righteousness and baptism. You've taught us to love all that is good, right, and true. We ask that you would bless all those who labor for the church, musicians, teachers, craftsmen, those who write hymns, that they may employ all their skill for your glory and in service to the gospel, that even the arts may testify to your saving death and resurrection. Be with all your people, dear Heavenly Father, in their various callings, in the family, in our nation, and as part of your church. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful shepherd, your wounds are our healing. Your voice calls us to return to you in time of need. Hear us on behalf of all who suffer in body or mind, those who grieve, and, to the, and those to whom death draws near. We pray especially for Barbara, for Misty and Harper, for Randy, Bob, Tom, Lorraine, Paul, Paul, Jean, Art, and those we name in our hearts. We ask, O Lord, that you would grant them healing according to your will, grace to sustain them in the day of trouble, and hope of the new and everlasting life to come as they face death. Be with those who've lost their jobs, that in this time of stress, they may look to you all the more to provide them their daily bread. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious shepherd, you seek out those who have fallen, and you restore the sinner. Send forth your spirit to rekindle faith in the hearts of those who've fallen away from the truth, or those who've been overcome by temptation. Bring good from ill, and in increase in all of us a hunger for your word, and a recognition of our need to be pastured, that many may be gathered into your flock when we open our doors again. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, you've not withheld anything from us, but you've emptied yourself upon the cross that we would be saved. Move our hearts to such devotion. Teach us such generosity, that we may bring to you our offerings with a grateful heart, that we may serve our neighbor in their time of need with all that you've given to us. Lord, in your mercy. 
Good shepherd, you set your table among us in the presence of our enemies. Hear us, we pray, because we are beset by so many false voices, tempted by so many false shepherds. Help us to hear your voice, to abide safely in your word. Equip us with your spirit, so that we may receive your body and blood with faith and repentant heart. Increase our unity in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Great and good shepherd, we pray that you would hear your sheep and answer our prayers according to your mercy. That you would grant to us all things profitable and keep us from all things harmful. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 